There is no limit to the footage of people shunning lasers at aircraft, and many of them end up getting arrested almost immediately. Which is crazy, it's almost like you're shining a literal beacon into the sky, giving away your exact location, saying, hey, I'm right here and I'm committing a felony, come and arrest me. And while a lot of these people likely have nefarious intent, I feel like some of them are just unaware of the consequences of their actions. But how bad can it really be to shine a laser at an aircraft? Well, the FAA has received 13,304 reports of laser strikes on aircraft, and that's just within 2023 alone. And I'm pretty sure plenty of these strikes go unreported, but if you watch some of the footage of these incidents, you'll notice some similarities among almost all of them, which is they're all green lasers. This should be no surprise once you learn that all the top selling lasers on Amazon and eBay are $20 green laser pointers. These are usually listed as under 5 milliwatts in power to avoid safety and shipping regulations, but in reality, they're usually around 50 to 200 milliwatts in power. Now, unfortunately for the pilots, and really just humans in general, the color green is the most visible and blinding part of the color spectrum, but really, any laser over 5 milliwatts is considered unsafe for the eyes. So I'm going to shine this real 5 milliwatt red laser at this camera to see how it compares to this 15,000 milliwatt laser in terms of damage. Now, if you're in need of a camera, I'm sorry, but you're not getting one from me. So let's pause it here. I did say this was a red laser after all, so why does it appear white in the center of the light source? I mean, if I shine it directly into my eyes, it appears red. Yep, definitely just red. And it still is. This white spot has to do with the way a camera sensor works. The photosites, or pixels, in a camera sensor don't actually detect different colors of light, at least not directly. Instead, they detect the intensity of light, regardless of color. Your camera can distinguish between the different colors of light because each pixel is equipped with filters that let in either red, green, or blue light and block out the rest, allowing the camera to register what color of light hit where, in accordance to the photoreceptor's location and what color filter is there. However, these color filters aren't perfect. If you have a bright enough light source, like this laser, the intense light can overwhelm the filters and pass through all of them. When this happens, it tricks the camera into registering the light as white because it's receiving high intensity light across all its color channels simultaneously. But what does any of this have to do with shining lasers at aircraft and why you shouldn't do it? Well, let me introduce to you the Pilot Retina Fryer 3000 Ultra SE Pro Max Ultimate X Plus, the third edition. It's actually called the Blue Demon, which is not an understatement by the way. That high-pitched noise you hear is the laser literally turning the tape's surface into a plasma, which rapidly expands the air around it, creating an audible frequency. <laughs> Fucking laser-induced sound is what it is. <laughs> Fucking laser induced. Now, this camera held up pretty well to the 5 milliwatt laser. No damage as far as I can tell. So, let's see what the 15 watt laser can do. And let's just say this camera represents your eye. Except in reality, your eyes are much more susceptible to damage from a laser than a camera sensor is. And within less than a second, the sensor is fried. Fortunately, though, I can just buy another camera. But I can't say the same about an eye. There are no surgeries that can fix this kind of damage, and unfortunately, your retina can't repair itself beyond a certain extent. But I have some good news, at least for the pilots. Commercial jetliners typically fly at around 30,000 to 40,000 feet high, and if you were to shine, say, a 15 watt flashlight at a plane that high, the pilots wouldn't even notice. This is because flashlights follow the inverse square law, where the intensity of light from a point source will diminish by a factor of 4 for every doubling of distance from the source. For example, if I wanted to capture the same amount of light that's shining on this square right here, but from twice the distance, I'd need exactly four squares of the same size. Laser pointers, on the other hand, do not follow the inverse square law. A laser pointer creates a collimated beam of light that doesn't really spread out that much compared to a flashlight. And although they don't follow the inverse square law, the beam of light will still spread out a little bit given enough distance. And this is due to diffraction. So if you were to shine one of these $20 lasers from eBay at a plane that's like 35,000 feet high, the beam of light will probably spread out to around the size of the plane itself. And since this light is so diffuse, by the time it reaches the plane, it's not really enough to cause permanent blindness. At least not with a 200 milliwatt laser, which is definitely enough to cause blindness up close. But direct and permanent eye damage is not really the problem when it comes to shining lasers at aircraft. And although the light isn't concentrated enough to cause permanent eye damage, it is still enough to cause temporary blindness. And I'm no pilot. 
I know, surprising, but I feel like being temporarily blinded while flying a plane is no bueno. Take it from the man himself. We suffered flash blindness after imaging and then retinal burning that continued on for a while. Notice how he said retinal burning for a while. Now, if this is true, it was probably an incident that happened pretty close to the ground, either during takeoff or landing, which are the most crucial times of flight that require the utmost focus. But regardless, in the cockpit of a plane or even a helicopter, the lighting conditions inside are pretty dark. This is to reduce glare on the windows so they could see outside better, and so they could see all their controls which are usually illuminated with LEDs. During these low light conditions, your pupils will dilate to allow as much light into your retina as possible. This not only allows you to see what's around you better, but also forces you to succumb to the wrath of a bright laser beam better as well. What these pilots are experiencing is called flash blindness. It's almost like when you first wake up and go to the bathroom to switch on the lights and you're just hit with this flashbang of intense brightness that makes you want to go back to sleep forever. If a pilot experiences this, he'll probably report it to air traffic control. Air traffic control will then gather data on the incident, like the location, and immediately report it to local law enforcement, and sometimes even the FBI. And if the law happens to have a helicopter available, they will not use it sparingly. They will try to track your ass down, and they may be successful if you continue shining the laser at the helicopter for some reason, which is what you usually see in a lot of these videos. And you won't face gentle punishment for such crimes either. Under Title 18, U.S. Code Section 39A, knowingly aiming a laser pointer at an aircraft or its flight path is a federal offense. Convicted individuals can face up to five years in prison. Wait, the flight path? Okay, well, at least I've never done it knowingly. Offenders can also be fined up to $250,000. On top of that, the FAA can impose civil penalties of up to $11,000 per violation, and even more for multiple violations. Now, a big reason I'm making this video is due to the highly polarized views on this topic. On one hand, you got the people thinking that their $20 laser isn't going to cause any issues whatsoever to pilots. And on the other, well, you could see for yourself. But the truth is that out of around 100,000 total reports of lasers being shined at aircraft, not a single one has ever caused permanent eye injury or a crash. But it is still pretty distracting and annoying for the pilots, so there is still a serious risk of a crash happening. So if you don't want to be responsible for the first big news story about a plane crashing from a laser, then don't do it. Don't train lasers at aircraft. But lasers are pretty cool, and there's a lot that you could learn from them. So I don't discourage you from pointing high power lasers into the sky as long as you're not careless about it and you like and subscribe.